1.6 covers slopes of tangents and instantaneous rates of change. So an instantaneous rate of change, or an IROC, is composed of many different AROCs, your average rates of change. And that's why I have it as a warm-up. We want to make sure that this skill is very, very good. We need to know how to calculate an AROC, because if we don't, we will have no chance in hell of calculating an IROC. Okay, so your AROC is just a slope. You're going to take the slope of a specific interval. So here is your y2 minus your y1, x2 minus your x1. This guy right here, I want to take out my highlighter, is going to be our x2. That goes right there. So we're going to take the 2.1 and we're going to sub it into your x's and calculate whatever that answer equals to, that's going to be your y2. We're going to do the same thing for the x1. So here's your x1, we place it right here, and we're going to take that 2 and plug it into your x's again. So 2 minus 2, 2 plus 1, whatever that final answer is, that's going to be your y1. Subtract your two y values, subtract your two x values, and then divide your answers, and that should give you the slope. The slope is basically your average rate of change, your AROC. These ones I gave you the answers for, you can figure them out on your own. They're going to be different because obviously the interval is different. Now here's a little bit of a tip. Um, you can put your yellow numbers first and your green numbers second. It really doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. Just make sure that you don't take your green and put it here and then cross it over to this side and then put your yellows here and here. So don't crisscross your colors, make sure that your colors are the same on top of each other. These guys are all AROCs, but what is an IROC? So an IROC is an instantaneous rate of change, which means that it's the slope at a certain instant. Um, it's not over a range of time or a range of x values. It is the slope at a specific x value. It's going to be a little bit difficult to explain. I'll try my best. Um, but basically, what you do is, um, like, let's say we're talking about our warm up question. So, this guy is a cubic graph, which is already graphed. And for instance, what if we were trying to find our I rock at an x value of 2? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find a bunch of A rocks. And what we can do is we can kind of uh, pick a number that's really close to 2 but maybe from the left hand side. So 1.99 is extremely close to 2 but it's to the left versus say if I decide to talk about this guy 2.01 is really close to 2 but from the right hand side. Okay so we'll look at one at a time. Why don't we look at the left hand side first. 1.99 might be like somewhere here Okay, and it produces a dot on the graph, maybe like right there, so on the black line. And what I want to do is I want to create a line or a secant line that goes from the blue dot to the black dot. So that's a secant. As I move the secant, so let me see if I can actually move it. If I move it closer and closer to 2, notice that it starts to overlap the red line, which is the tangent. That tangent is our answer for our IROC. But what I would need is then numbers like 1.99, they have to get closer and closer to 2. So for example, 1.999, 1.99999, and you get the picture. Okay, so what I could do is I could also do the same thing from the right hand side. 2.01 is probably like somewhere there, and it produces a dot on the black graph, like right here. Okay, and then what I can do is I can join those two, the red dot and the black dot, and they produce some sort of a slope. That's your A rock. Now, if I calculate a couple more A rocks with numbers that are like this but closer to two, like 2.001, 2.0001, this A rock is going to get closer and closer to um, this tangent line. So the tangent line is the red line. Notice that the two black lines are already very close to um, the red line. So they're getting closer and closer to that I rock number, which is the slope. Here's another way of seeing it, because I know that that's kind of confusing. Okay, why don't we do this? We will talk about from the left-hand side first. 
Here's your four, so four is right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to approach four. So 3.9 is a number on the left-hand side of the four. 3.99 is very close to the four, and 3.999 is extremely close to the four. So this is all coming from the left-hand side. Now if I decided to find the slope of each of those intervals, I'm gonna to start to hone in on the I rock at four. You could also do this from the right hand side. Okay, so that's supposed to be an R. Um, numbers on the right hand side of four are 4.01, so that might be there, 4.001, 4.0001, and so on. So you kind of get the picture. I'm gonna find my I, sorry, A rocks. Um, of each of those intervals, so each of these intervals will give you an AROC, and they should also approach a number. That number is going to be your I rock. Let's see this in practice because it's kind of confusing. I'm going to skip over the example number one because it's a little bit different. Why don't we do example number two first? Okay, so you are given an object. It's going to be modeled, um, well, its height's going to be modeled by this equation. And then we're talking about meters and seconds for your height and your time. And they want you to estimate your rate of change or your slope at exactly three seconds. Okay, so why don't I get out my highlighter. Your three seconds is modeled here, here, and here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to approach from either the left or the right. So this one looks like we're just going to approach from the right hand side a little bit to the right of three and a little bit to the right of three, and then very, very, very close to that three, but still from the right hand side. Now what you're going to do is you're going to figure out your points. So this would be your x2 right there. And then remember, you get your y2 by taking this number and subbing it into the equation wherever you see a t. So you're going to go negative five times 3.1 squared plus three times 3.1 plus 65. And that's going to give you this number right here, which is your y2. Your y1 is going to be your 3, because you had the 3 right here. So take the 3, put it into the t's, figure out your final answer, and I think I got 29. So here's your y2 minus your y1, and that equal to this number. Your x2 minus your x1, and it equal to this number. And then to find your final slope, your A rock, you're going to take these two numbers and you divide them. So here we have the answer, and that's this guy right here. So negative 27.5. You're going to figure out your A rock several more times. And notice that as the gap between this green number and the yellow number becomes smaller and smaller, your A rocks approach a specific number. They get closer and closer to negative 27. That means at three seconds, the instantaneous rate of change is going to be negative 27 meters per second. The last example is example number one. So we're just going to go back to that example. Um, this one's a little bit different because it doesn't have an equation. This one has a table instead. So these are our x values and these are our y values. And what the question is asking us to do is figure out the rate of change at a specific time, so that's an I rock. Now remember, the I rock is calculated by finding several A rocks. So if you want four, sorry, 6.4 seconds, you might have to find the A rock of this time interval between two coordinates, and then this interval, these two coordinates. Okay, so I think that's a little bit confusing. Let's just get rid of all that. So let's focus on the red. The red is trying to figure out um, the slope of these two coordinates. Okay, so there's two coordinates going on. There's this yellow one right here, the 6.2 and the 221. Then there's another coordinate going on right here. So that's the 6.4 and the 235. Once you figure out your slope, that's just a slope for these two points. Okay, so let's get rid of all of that. Then what we can do is we can compare that slope to the slope of these two points. So you have your 6.4, which is this guy and this guy. 
and then you have your other one which is a 6.6 .6. so 6.6 .6 and the 249 then you're going to find out your slope again notice that your slopes don't approach the same number and that's because it's written in a table so it's just a little bit different than the um, example that we went over just a second ago and what you're going to do now is you can either say that your IROC is between 68 and 69 which is written right here at the bottom or you can actually if you want to take the average of those two numbers and just say that an estimate for the IROC is going to be 68.75 which is exactly in the middle of those two numbers Okay, so remember the A rock is going to be calculated over an interval of um, x values, whereas the I rock is for a specific value. But you can only get your I rock if you calculate many A rocks.